Hi friends, today we will see one special topic other than the routine topic that is complications of mechanical ventilation. Because every time we are looking for only the benefits of mechanical ventilation, but today we will uh, see the risk factors of mechanical ventilation. Mechanical ventilation is often a life saving intervention, but it carries lots of uh, potential complications that includes uh, emphysema, airway injuries, alveolar damage, and ventilator associated pneumonia. Other complications include uh, decreased uh, cardiac output and uh, diaphragm atrophy and uh, oxygen toxicity. One of the primary complications that presents in uh, patient on mechanical ventilation that is acute lung injury or ARDS. These are the significant contributors of uh, patient mortality and morbidity. Ventilation is used to support a single organ system that is the lungs. And it cannot reverse any underlying disease process such as terminal cancer. For this reason, there can be difficult uh, decisions to be made whether this patient is suitable for mechanical ventilation. Let's see more about the complications. Okay, the first one is barotrauma. Barotrauma refers to alveolar rupture due to elevated transalveolar pressure. This can manifest as pneumothorax, pneumoperitoneum, subcutaneous emphysema, pneumomediastinum, and can sometimes progress to bronchopleural fistula or tension pneumothorax. High platelet pressures as opposed to peak airway pressures predispose to barotrauma. Hence it is patients with obstructive airway disease or disease of the lung parenchyma which leads to low complaints like ARDS, interstitial lung diseases uh, who are at greater risk. Sudden desaturation, tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, rise in peak airway pressures uh, reduce breath sound on one side or tracheal deviation in mechanically ventilated patients are suggestive of barotrauma and should prompt an investigation with chest x -ray. To prevent barotrauma, it is generally recommended to maintain the plate pressure below 35 cm H2O. Plate pressure can be lowered by treating the underlying causes, uh, bronchodilators in those with obstructive airway disease, sedation in those disynchronous with ventilator, lower tidal volume, reducing flow rate, or combination of all of this. Next one is volitrauma. Valley, that means ventilator associated lung injury, is associated with the alveolar edema and increased permeability caused by large tidal volumes, irrespective of air pressures. Patients particularly prone to develop valley are those receiving large tidal volumes, those with the underlying restrictive lung diseases, those with the acute lung injury or ARDS, and those who have received blood transfusions. Even physiological or low tidal volume can lead to valley, ventilator associated lung injury in some patients. This is because in patients with atelectasis, air tends to preferentially flow towards more complained alveoli that is the ones that are already open and hence may over distend them. Furthermore, those portions of the lung which are atelectasis but are being opened with each breath are also prone to lung injury due to shear forces associated with this. While it can be prevented by applying two methods. The first is to prevent alveolar over distension by employing low tidal volume ventilation. The general recommendation is to use the tidal volume of 8 ml per kg of ideal body weight based on the height and gender and to gradually keep lowering this by 1 ml per kg per ideal body weight to get to the lowest tidal volume which the patient can tolerate whilst providing acceptable oxygen. The second is to prevent collapse of alveoli during expiration and hence preventing cyclic atelectasis by using PEEP. 3 to 5 cm H2 is uh, determined to be physiological that is equivalent to a closed glottis in a normal healthy person. This can then be titrated upwards until greater status compliance is seen. Next one is autopy. Autopy refers to hyperinflation of the lungs due to air traffic. It is caused by initiation of inspiration before expiration is complete. It can be caused by large tidal volume, high respiratory rate, uh, insufficient time for expiration, obstructive air disease or narrow endotracheal tube. Unchecked autopip can lead to barotrauma as well as worsening of the hemodynamics effect of positive pressure ventilation. It can also worsen ventilation perfusion mismatch that is VQ mismatch by compressing capillaries in the healthy part of the lung and diverting blood to the diseased lung. 
Work of breathing may also be increased because in pressure cycle settings it makes it harder to trigger a breath. Auto peep should be suspected when ventilation patient dyssynchrony is seen. Breaths may not be triggered despite visible inspiratory effort. It can also present as uh, sudden hypotension or desaturation. Treatment is to address the underlying causes. In patients with the high minute ventilation, lowering the tidal volume, respiratory rate or both may help. Increase in the inspiratory flow rate may also help by allowing more time for expiration. That is uh, like adjust the IE ratio on the way. Next one is hemodynamic effect. Positive pressure ventilation causes decreased cardiac output uh, by decreasing venous return. It is worsened with the high peak. Positive pressure ventilation also compresses the pulmonary vasculature, leading to reduced right ventricular output. This in turn leads to reduced left cardiac output. Next one is infections. Ventilator associated pneumonia. Wow. It is defined as pneumonia which occurs after 48 hours of intubation and mechanical ventilation. This, the incidence is between 9 to 27% and it is associated with considerable mortality up to 50%. Thus, early recognition and prompt treatment are important. There is crisis with the duration of ventilation. The last one is complications caused by ET2. Laryngeal injury can be caused by traumatic intubation, large ET2, movements caused by coughing or transporting the patient, high inflation pressure, or prolonged intubation. They can range from laryngeal edema, mucosal ulcers, granulomas, to even vocal cord paralysis caused by compression of the current uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve. Two are but serious complications are tracheal stenosis and tracheoesophageal fistula. Both of these are caused by high ET2 pressure and prolonged intubation. ET2 cuff pressure should be maintained between 18 to 25 centimeters H2O and should be checked frequently to minimize this risk. Okay, now we saw some serious complications of mechanical ventilation. So, early recognition of these problems are very important. Remember one thing do not treat the ventilator according to the ABG values. Look to the patient and treat the underlying causes. And mechanical ventilation is not itself a treatment, rather, it allows the patient to be maintained in a state that allows the healing and treatment to be taken place. You know, in some cases, ventilated associated lung injury that produced the disease as bad or worse than the one is being treated. So all what we have to do is close monitoring, daily full assessment of the patient progress, early weaning and extubation. I hope you enjoy my class. Thanks for watching me. Bye bye. And one more thing, if you like it, you can subscribe my channel and suggest for your friends. Bye.